Howdy folks, John here. Back to the R2 build today. We'll be working on the main body, going over printing, gluing, and assembly. We'll also be getting the utility arms working and the dome spinning. Lots to cover, let's get right into it. So this is what three weeks of printing has given us. All the main body sections are now complete. This is the Mark III body, the cut version. Says you need a minimum build plate size of 300 millimeters. My little Sovel is 280 by 260 and it worked. Just, you know, some of the bigger panels had to go diagonal on the build plate, but they did fit. I didn't think I was gonna be able to fit the center leg support plate on this little Sovel SV01, but no problem. Had to go, however, at a diagonal on the build plate. But as you can see, if you uh, get a little creative with your placement and your slicer, you can fit some of these bigger pieces on. It's a little risky doing a tall, skinny piece like this, but uh, you know, you put a, a raft around it and chances are it's not gonna break free if you've got a good adhesion layer. Pretty tall though, almost used the full height of the gantry. Came out well. If there was one thing I would do different, I would go with a finer layer height. Printed all these at 0.3 millimeter. Uh, yes, it went a little bit quicker, but uh, if I was to do it again, I think I'd go down to 0.25, maybe even 0.2. You know, let the printer do the work. I'm not in a huge rush, and it would just save a lot of sanding time. As far as sanding, same as the dome. Started with 60 grit, went to 120, then 220, using the palm sander, and a lot of little fiddly pieces, especially on the um, skirt. You know, all these little crevices and everything had to use, you know, I just used sandpaper folded into little squares to get into all the nooks and crannies. But I think we should be pretty good. This is gonna be painted in a satin or semi-gloss white. So it's not going to be as critical as having a perfect primer base coat uh, because the white won't show as many defects as the blue and the shiny silver did, but still want it fairly nice. And as you can see, I've already gone over it with the uh, glazing compound or putty, whatever it's called. And I'm not gonna actually paint this until R2 is probably completed. I wanna get it working because I'm sure it'll get scratched up and everything, putting everything together, fitting all the mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So when I'm gluing this together, I think I'm gonna start with the front panels. Just in case there's any screwiness going on, it'll be at the back as far as fitment goes. But just trial fitting everything. Uh, everything seems to be lining up okay. There's these holes that go all the way through R2. This is just uh, 5 30 seconds inch rod. And this goes all the way through R2's body to help line stuff up. I must say, this is uh, somewhat stressful. <laughs> Not much working time with uh, medium CA glue. But it's going okay. Just taking the time. Trial fitting everything first. Just making sure there's no train wrecks. And then, uh, yeah, lining everything up. Little tip, if you get uh, CA glue on your fingers, which will no doubt happen, easiest way to take it off, sandpaper. Just sand that dry uh, CA glue off the old digits. And uh, yeah, it works. Once this dries completely, I'm gonna get some uh, gloves on and I'm just gonna s go over all the seams with uh, medium CA glue just to fill in any gaps and then I will uh, sand it down. Of course, we're gonna have to fill all these seam lines in with lightweight body filler, just like the dome. Now the moment of truth, how round is this thing? Oh! Oh, I don't know if it's luck or skill. Let's call it luck. 
boy, that does fit nice. I just couldn't resist to see what it looked like with the head on. It's big. But yeah, it's starting to look like R2. That or a funny looking garbage can. Little tool tip, if your sandpaper gets loaded up or clogged, get one of these crepe blocks. They work amazing for cleaning up plugged or loaded up sandpaper. Uh, you'll easily double the life of your sandpaper with this stuff. Uh, I got this one from Lee Valley Tool up here in Canada, but you can find them online. Well, now that we've got the sanding of the main body done, I'm not going to go over all the details. I've already shown this with the dome, you know, using the lightweight body filler and then the Bondo glazing spot and putty to fill in any little uh, marks that are left over. Of course, it's going to have to uh, prime it and everything, but uh, for the most part, the body is finished. Now, remember I had mentioned those uh, rods that I had, those 530 seconds rods when I was gluing this all together. You're actually supposed to use M4 threaded rod. And the idea is the M4 rod, you put uh, nuts on either end and it holds everything securely. And there's eight uh, on the body here. There's four long ones that are 500 millimeters long. And then there's four shorter ones that are 370. Now, I've already cut these and everything. But as it turned out here in Canada, I could not find four millimeter threaded rod for the life of me. So what I ended up doing is just using that 530 seconds rod that I already had on hand and using a die just uh, threaded the ends with M4 uh, threads on each end and that's what we'll use to hold everything together. I'm not going to have opening bread pan doors. That's these two big side ones. Uh, I've got them glued in but I am going to have the opening logic panel door and the charging port door. Still not too sure what I'm going to do with the logic panel. I'm probably actually going to have my amplifier controls in here uh, or I could also have lithium battery access. Haven't decided yet. And same thing on the rear. Haven't really decided on this back plate if I'm going to have this panel removable or not. I'm pretty sure I will. But as you can see, lots of spot putty work on the body. It was quite a bitch to actually sand, I'm not going to lie. It was not a fun job. And the reason the spot putty, you just can't get into all these little tight recesses. So that's why you'll see in all the recessed doors why there's quite a bit of spot putty. Same thing on the uh, utility arms. Quite a few layer lines in there. Should have gone with a finer print for this section of the body. And the doors, they were a bit of a pain to install. If you've ever installed doors on a scale RC helicopter, you know alignment and playing around with it. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but uh, didn't go too bad. This one's got the little magnetic catch. Works quite well. I don't know if I'm going to have a magnetic catch on this one or if I'm going to have it operate with a servo. Yeah, so one thing you'll find with the body is the printing just never ends. <laughs> It's non-stop and there's a few parts here that are, you know, 50% fill, 2.4 millimeter uh, wall thickness, use a lot of filament heavy. These are the shoulder modules, so they're structural for the back legs and then the uh, shoulder hubs. And what else? Oh yeah, this is another super strong piece. This is the bottom plate that holds the center foot. Again, 50% uh, infill, 2.4 millimeter uh, thickness. And then there's the skirt. Can't put it on yet though because it's actually held on with that plate. Six millimeter bolts go through this, through the bottom of the body, and then thread into threaded inserts on there. Speaking of threaded inserts, uh, you need a lot of M4 square nuts, and I don't know what's going on, it's Murphy's Law. I have ordered square nuts twice now. Once the order was lost because of all the BC floods, and then uh, the other one came, and it was just regular hex nuts. So I've got another hundred of, of them on order. Just never ends. Little assembly tip 
if you're going to have moving grabber arms, one, you have to get uh, 606 bearings, two of them for each arm, and then there's two little printed pins, one that goes in from the top and another one that goes in through this little opening up through the top. You'll find out though you have to drill the holes out a little bit to clean them up, the printed holes, or these won't slide through. Top one's no big deal. Drill it through the top. I used a uh, 1564 drill bit. Bottom one, however, you can't get a drill in there or even a normal size drill bit. I had to get an old 1564 drill bit, cut it down to about three inches in length, just long enough to fit in this opening. And then I'm having to manually drill it out. I'm just using an RC helicopter feathering shaft removal tool. This has just got little one-way bearings in it. And luckily the one one-way bearing fits my drill bit. So the way to avoid this is before you even glue this section in, uh, should have cleaned that hole out first with the 1564 drill bit, would have saved all this hassle. Pain in the ass. Okay, before getting those threaded rods in, just wanted to show I've got the uh, two servos in. These are just standard servos. Uh, and then you just have the little gear that moves the uh, utility arm. One thing to note with these servos though, they have to be 180 degree sweep. Most servos are 90 degree sweep. These are old uh, Futaba, what are these, S128s. Uh, they're easy to modify. You just put uh, two resistors on either side of the potentiometer to increase its overall resistance. And that's what gives you the longer sweep. There's information online on how to do that. Now these shoulders, uh, there's an F mark on them for front and then the numbers are on the inside. So uh, this will be the left one and they just slide in and they're held in nice and tight and secure. As you can see, they're beveled. And then there's holes on them that those threaded rods go through. And then the upper plate, it's held on with those threaded rods. Now I'm gonna have to take this plate off again to fit the data slot that goes in here. I haven't, I haven't sanded or painted any of the uh, greebles yet, as you saw from the workbench, but we're gonna get all these uh, threaded rods in now. So there'll be a nut going on the top and bottom, holding this plate on and holding these shoulders in as well. I don't know, might've been easier just to glue the utility arms in and not have them moving. This is uh, proving to be a pain in the butt. A lot of pissing around later, but they work. With these plastic pins, what I found out I had to do is heat them up with a heat gun just a little bit to soften them, push them in, and then get the alignment of the arms perfect so the gaps are even. And yeah, I wanted analog servos in there, not digital, uh, just in case these stall out digitals will draw tons of current. And uh, yeah, I think for something like this, an analog is fine. So the upper ring is now bolted in place uh, with those uh, threaded rods. That yeah, certainly made it stronger, I suppose. Talk about the engineering adage of complexity hampers execution. Again, those were a total pain, but they look cool. Now, I wanna get onto the drive system for the dome so we can get that dome going. And for that, we've got the motor bracket and the motor. I'm just gonna talk about these a little bit real quick. Uh, nothing to this. It bolts onto the side here. This would be the what the left side of R2. There's various holes so you can set the height of it and it holds the motor back here and it also holds your slip ring centered in R2. So all your all your signal wires and power that go up to the dome uh, they come through this bracket and then you just put your slip ring on. This is just a 10 conductor slip ring. I'm only going to need eight or so, but you can get these all the way up to 20, I think even higher. This is pretty cool though. The way these work is there's just a bunch of little brushes 
on rings in there and they pick up the electrical signal from the fixed non-rotating bottom half and then the top half will rotate with the dome. It's even ball raced. I was quite impressed with that. These things don't cost much. They're about 10 bucks. I think I paid for this one. It's only rated at uh, two amp, but you're not running huge current through this thing. Now the motor itself, uh, this is a 24 volt motor because I'm going to be running 6S power system in here, so 24 volts. But you can get these in 12 volt too if you wanted to run 12 volt. It's a gear reduction motor, so you've got a normal brushed DC motor on the bottom and then the top half. There's a bunch of gears in there to reduce the drive. This is a 300 RPM motor, which should be about right. Just a note that you can see how the output shaft is offset. It's not centered. And this is quite important because you can get these gear reduction motors where the shaft is centered. They use a planetary gear set, but you don't want that because the whole idea with this off-centered uh, output shaft is you can turn the motor in the motor mount and that will move the gear further away or closer into the ring gear. So that's how you adjust your uh, gear mesh. Very important. And just a note on the gear. Remember back when we were printing the uh, ring gear for the Lazy Susan, I think it was in part uh, one or two, I'll fire a link in the card doodad. I had talked about how I had to size that ring gear and upsize it slightly for the Lazy Susan. So I had to make sure I changed the scaling ratio as well for this little pinion gear so it was printed at the same ratio. I think it was 102.4%. And it still fit the shaft fine, no problem at all. And now the teeth will perfectly mesh with the uh, upscaled main ring gear. Let's get it in. Ball end hex drivers are a must. Got to come in at all kinds of different angles on this build. Here is the Lazy Susan with the ring gear installed. Now in the Mr. Badly files, it tells you how to adjust these to get your height set and everything. And yeah, it's, it's time consuming. That's all I can say. It's not hard, but you have to have the right amount of space between the Lazy Susan and the ring on the body. And then also the right amount of space between the gear and the Lazy Susan. And both of those heights will dictate how big the gap is between the go dome and the body. So you want, you know, what, an eighth of an inch maximum, even less. I've done this fairly quickly. These aren't going to be the final screws I'm going to be using. As I said, I don't have any of the square nuts, which have got to go in here. I just want to see if this thing works. And then on the upper half of the Lazy Susan, you've got three screws protruding out and that's what the dome will sit on. Uh, there's no real way to screw the dome on. I'm probably going to use rare earth magnets. There's other ways to do it. You know, I was even thinking of gluing little blocks on here and then having a screw come through the blued part of the ring section on the dome to go into the block. But now nah, that won't look too good because there'll be two little screws. You know, I'd paint them to match, but that's not uh, screen accurate. Anyway, the way this works is this will sit on the ring. Make sure you bring your wire through from your slip ring. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a slight gap between the Lazy Susan and the body. And that's kind of where I want the lower part of the dome ring to fit. But let's get this hooked up to the uh, RC receiver and see if it at least works. So there it is, all working. I'm going to go over my electronics in a separate video, of course, but I just wanted to show this is the motor controller. It's made by a company called Dimension Engineering and it's their Siren 10 model, meaning it's good up to 10 amps. This little motor doesn't pull any more than an amp max, pretty much. But these are really nice. They're highly recommended in the Astromech forums because they've got such a fast switching rate. Uh, I think it's 30 kilohertz. So even at really low speeds, you don't hear that high pitch switch rate whine. Uh, it's silent. I'll go really slow here. No noise at all. 
what is that, about 30 RPM. Takes about two seconds to do one full revolution. Let's get the dome on and see what it looks like. <laughs> we have a moving head, folks. That's full speed. So yeah, about 30 RPM. And that's with the, uh, that 300 RPM gear reduction motor. They come in 350 and then I think the next step is uh, 400 or 420. So you could certainly get it faster, but uh, I think that's uh, plenty fast. You can see it can go really slow as well. That siren motor controller is amazing. Yeah, there's no whine or anything from it. So I can see why it's so highly recommended and huge voltage input range. So it will work with 12 volt systems or 24. And I think we got the gap pretty decent. It's uh, very consistent all the way around, uh, you know, about eighth of an inch. So now that I know that those little nuts are giving a good gap, just the nut alone, I'll measure their thickness and then I will print some spacers out uh, so we don't have to use the nuts. Obviously we have to screw those screws down into that ring once I get <laughs> little square insert nuts. And this motor controller must have some braking because they, when you center, when I center the stick, or you're giving it a 1500 uh, microsecond pulse width, it's stopping immediately. It doesn't drift from momentum. So you can really replicate R2's, uh, you know, robotic head movement quite well. So we've just got the legs to print now. <laughs> I say just. You know, it never, it never ends. It just keeps going and going. If you're wondering where we are at filament, I just actually ran out. So I've got more on order, not printing any legs right now, unfortunately. Uh, we're sitting at 20 rolls. And that's on the lower end of the Mr. Badley uh, file in their instructions, what, uh, you know, how much filament you'd go through. So uh, I think by the time we get the legs done, we're definitely gonna be at that 25 number. Uh, for rolls of filament because they are structural. They've got a high infill density percentage and substantial wall thickness. So those legs are going to use quite a bit of filament on their own. I've already got the front one done and the front foot. Uh, and I've started on the right leg. I'm about a third of the way through it. I'm sure we'll be over 25 rolls, but when we're all done, uh, we'll tally it up so you know what to expect. And the next video, we're probably going to be going over electronics, seeing that the legs are probably going to be going for another month printing. I've been getting a few questions on uh, what I'm going to be using for electronics. So just go over the basics. Until then, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time, and happy R2 building.